we expressed our profound disappointment on behalf of all the families that will be impacted by Carrier and United Technologies' decision to leave Indiana for Mexico. And frankly, we also expressed disappointment in the way it was handled. I mean, uh, our administration almost learned about this in the newspaper. I wish I'd known that Carrier was making this decision to begin with. Uh, I'd roll back the, the clock to try to engage them in conversations about the decisions that they made. Is to move production to Monterey, Mexico. What am I gonna do? And they've gotten a raw deal. Very disrespectful, and I felt like they left us behind. Life is going to change. We have heard your anger and your disappointment over Carrier's decision to move jobs here. And we're not going away quietly. Mexico's a disaster. Something's got to change in this country. Workers take a stand outside the carrier plant. But we've got to keep these jobs here. Let's get down to the bottom line. In our state, 17% of jobs are connected to manufacturing. We've got companies moving into Indiana from around the country and around the world. We're, we're the leading manufacturing state in the country. Nearly one in five jobs in Indiana is in the manufacturing sector. That's a much higher percentage than in much of the rest of the country right now. So one of the biggest questions that people have of us is this $3 an hour question. So when we heard that the uh, a top executive with Carrier was coming to the State House, we had to decide what are we going to ask this top executive when he comes through the building. And we knew that we would only have maybe 15 seconds to ask one or two questions. Mr. McDonough, good morning and welcome to Indianapolis. Will you change your mind? Will you change your mind and keep the jobs? Looking forward to a great meeting with the governor. Sir, would you work for $3 an hour? Looking forward to uh, discussing with the governor uh, so the transition it. for our workers and uh, getting back to business. So I take it you would not work for $3 an hour, sir? And I was hoping that he would just stop and say, you know, let's talk about this later, um, or something that would, that, that would have more, more meaning, or that, or that would give us more of an insight into the decision-making process. We didn't get that. When I asked them, why are you leaving Indiana for Mexico, they talked about red tape, they talked about regulations. They talked about 260 new rules coming out of the Department of Energy in the last two years. 53 of those rules were targeted directly at their industry. Now that, that's an avalanche of red tape against an industry. Okay, you know. So what are the regulations? So we asked the company, hey, can you send us just a, an email, just can you detail for us what those regulations are so that we can follow up to see what other companies are, are facing this. He talked about the Department of Energy, he talked about the EPA, and, and the fact that in their industry, uh, uh, seven of their competitors are already in Mexico today, and, uh, and, and, and pointing to the excessive, if not, I, not his words, but mine, avalanche of red tape. We don't want this to repeat itself. So if there are federal regulations that are really clamping down on businesses, what are they? So that we can say, hey, we can ask questions about those regulations. Send an email asking for a listing of those regulations. Anybody see the email? I'm still waiting for the email response. I mean, if federal regulations are the major reason for the departure, then just tell the workers. Tell them why their jobs are being pushed to Mexico. I think people can understand when given information. We don't have to like the information. The head of carrier told me the regulations are the same in Mexico as here in the United States. What this is about is chasing after $3 an hour wages in Mexico. Carrier. You got this Carrier Corporation. Carrier. Carrier. I intend to do everything that I can to prevent United Technologies from shutting down their plants in Indianapolis and Huntington. 
from throwing 2,100 American workers out on the street and moving to Monterey, Mexico, where they're going to pay people there $3 an hour. Free trade, great, but it's not working for us. It's not working for us. Now, Carrier in Indianapolis plans to close down operations and lay off 1,400 workers. UTEC in Huntington is laying off around 700 more. And that is just six months after their parent company spent $12 billion on stock buybacks for shareholders. Over 100,000 Hoosiers lost their jobs. Nearly 18% of Hoosiers lost their jobs under NAFTA. And that was just two countries. And we've, we've just seen Carrier ship jobs to Mexico. Uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, attempts to have an agreement with 11 countries. So we saw the damage that an agreement between two countries would create. Just imagine the damage it will create with 11. I think there's a responsibility on the part of companies here to do everything they can to work with the state, to work with us in terms of what can we do to have, make it possible for you to stay involved in our state. But we have got to get some relief from the avalanche of taxes and regulations coming out of Washington, D.C. Initially, uh, the task force uh, was uh, in, in, empowered to seek to keep as many jobs in Indianapolis as possible. Uh, that now seems to be a remote hope. Carrier has expressed very little, if any, interest in changing uh, its decision. So uh, the task force from this point forward uh, will be charged with the responsibility of assisting uh, recovering any tax incentives uh, that have been paid by the city uh, to Carrier uh, for uh, prior uh, job training or uh, other uh, economic incentives. And then secondly, uh, helping our workers find good paying, uh, meaningful job opportunities when those jobs transition uh, to, the, to Mexico. It would be our desire to dedicate all 1.2 million to job training and other uh, supportive uh, efforts uh, to help these families make a transition into uh, other employment. This is all a bunch of crap. If we wanted Carrier to stay here, I'll tell you what it takes. Your Senate and your Congress telling them you're not getting one more damn defense contract where they make their hundreds of millions. <laughs>